Hi, this is Quark Yifu. I'm going to do an Excel tutorial about how to use a Excel function called VLOOKUP. It's a very useful function, so let's get started. First, I'm going to make my pages nice so everybody can see. So I'm going to press Control A to select everything. I'm going to change my font size to, let's make it 26. I'm going to make it pretty big. Since everything's selected, if I move one column, it will change all of them. So I'll make a nice big column. Now, sheet 2, I'm going to need to use that too, so I'm going to do the same thing. Control A to select everything. I want to use my font size as 26. And then I'm going to push this over here, and it will change the size of all the columns. Now, in this tutorial, we're going to uh, pretend, I'm going to change back to sheet 1. We're going to pretend that if I type a data here, something like a name, then it will give me the address and the phone number here. That's what I want. Okay, so if I imagine a spreadsheet, you could use it for anything, but this is what we're going to do. So name, if I put the name here, then it's automatically going to fill in the address and the phone number. Okay, so that's the goal. So now I'm going to go to sheet two because that's where I have to put my data in uh, or get my data from. So now let's put in some, I'll put in name one, address one, and phone one. So let's do that now. Okay, so you can see I just have this, but you know, you can imagine a real database with John Smith, uh, 13 Apple Street, phone number, 41, blah, 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 whatever. Okay, so since I've put numbers on the end of this, there's an interesting function in Excel, probably most people know, but see if my, I turn my cursor into a little X here, it turns, I don't know if you can see that if the video re records it. But if I put my cursor at the bottom right-hand side of the entire selection, it will just duplicate everything all the way down. If I can drag it down as far as I want, and boom, it fills in automatically instead of me having to type all that in. So now here's my database where I have my, my uh, information. Now notice there's three columns, one, two, three. That's my database. Now it could be five, could be ten columns. You could have a database like this full of, you know, however far you want with whatever information. So it could be address, phone number, date of birth, driver's license number, vehicle identification, blah, blah, whatever. Okay, so that's where we're going to get the data from. Now let's go back to sheet one and we will put in our function. Now this is where we're going to type in. So I don't want a function there because I'm going to type in there anyway and it would destroy any function in there as I type. So here's where I want my information to return to. I want this to be the address. So we're going to put in VLOOKUP. Our VLOOKUP is a formula, so we're going to insert a function, okay? And here, I've been playing with it, so VLOOKUP comes up already for me. Uh, but you might have to type in something or search for it or whatever, but that's what you want, VLOOKUP. So I'll put VLOOKUP look up in. And it comes up with a little box that asks me uh, what, what I'm trying to do. Uh, it asks for the lookup value, which is where I'm going to type my information in. See, there, I typed, I just clicked on it. I didn't have to, I could have typed in A1, but, okay, table array is where I'm going to get my data from. That's on sheet two, so I'm going to go over to sheet two, and I'm going to select these three columns, one, two, three, and you can see it filled it in for me, sheet two, A through C, see, okay? Now I'm going to click on column index number. Now that's what it's asking me is what column of information do you want me to return? And I actually want to return the address column, which is the second column, so I'm just going to put a 2 in there. And there's my 2. Now range lookup is something I don't really understand too much, but it shows the closest match in column for but whatever it is. I'm not going to try to explain it because I don't know what it means, but I always put in false here. And uh, that works pretty good for me. So I'm going to put OK. And it will accept my little function there. And there you go. And you can see if I put in, uh, for instance, name 8, then it will automatically return address 8. See how that works? Pretty good. Now, uh, <clears throat> as an interesting note, uh, this is... Uh, Excel 2003, but this, what I'm doing is going to work on all Excel 
versions because they are backwardly compatible. In fact, it might be a little easier now than what I'm doing. So, But here is another little cool trick about uh, XLs. It's, it's, if I take this little corner here, my uh, cursor's in the bottom right-hand corner of uh, box B1, right? And I'm just going to see where it turns into a little X there. I'm going to drag that over, and it automatically figures out that I want the next column over. Excel does that for me. So it knows, it writes the formula, and see how it's changed it from A through C to false, and it's changed it through B, D, to false. So it took one column out, and you know, it's a really nice function. Not only that, I can take both of these, highlight both of them, put my little cursor in the bottom right-hand corner there of the highlighted area, and just drag it down as far as I want, and it will just fill in all those formulas forever. You can see how, again, if I type in uh, name 4, it will return address 4 and phone number 4. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Now, the only thing I don't like about this is it's got this NA in there. Now, I don't know if later versions of Excel still do this. I don't think they do. I think it doesn't put that in there, but i got to tell... Uh, this version not to do that. So what I'm going to do is I have my whole thing here. This part I don't want to change where it says VLOOKUP blah 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 because that's you know that's good. That's working for us. So I'm going to put that in parentheses. There you go. And I'm going to add an IF THEN statement to the beginning of that. I, I don't actually have to type in the THEN part but I, I do have to put in IF. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to put in IF if, and then here's my little statement, if, in this case, it's going to be this cell, so I'm just going to click on the cell, so it'll put in A5. So if A5 equals close quotes, which means nothing, and I have to put a comma there, and I don't have to type in then, it already knows I'm going to type in a then, then close quotes. So that if uh, A5 equals nothing, then don't do anything. And then I've got to actually put some, see I've got a parenthesis here, a parenthesis here, and a parenthesis here. So I have to put parenthesis on the other side. So this is one, that one's covered. This has one, I need to put an opposing parenthesis here. So that all is one little thing. And then the other parenthesis right there. So I actually need three on the end of this to make this work. And that should work. I'm going to press enter. And there we go. Now you can see this VLOOKUP, it doesn't put the NA there. Okay, but it still works if I go let's say name 4, then it gives me address 4 and phone number 4. Or I could put name, let's try name 22. No click off of that. Address 22 and phone 22. And once again we can select both of these, put our cursor in the little corner, drag it down forever and ever and ever, and this will go on for a thousand whatever. And uh, oops, I forgot, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to drag this over first. I gotta drag this. This VLOOKUP is in there, but this one over here is still the old version with the NA, right? So I'm gonna drag this over so it will figure out how to do that. And now I can drag them all down. And we no longer have the we no longer have the little NA problem in there. So let's just make sure it works. Uh, put in name twelve. And address twelve and twelve everything works. So that's the end of this tutorial. I hope it helps you out.